So, um, we talked about mortar mixing. We had that mortar mixing quiz that is, is due. Most of you have that in. We are waiting for a couple of you to turn that in. That's fine. Um, it is graded and back in Blackboard for you if you want to look at your grade. Today, there is another quiz posted out there. So this is actually kind of going back a step with our similar figures. I have something like this triangle here. I have another triangle that looks like this. If I tell you that this side here is 9 inches, this side here is 15 inches. Oh, let's see here. Oh, this one, 15. X and 18 inches in Y. Find those missing sides, X and Y. We first need to pair up corresponding sides. What side of the other triangle corresponds to the 9 inch edges? What side of the other triangle corresponds to the 15 inches? X, X. X and what corresponds to the 18? <clears throat> now that we have that, we need to find a pair of corresponding sides <coughs> where we have both numbers. What pair is that? 9 and the 15. Perfect. So we're going to start with that ratio. We know that is our ratio of sides between the figures. Now let's say we want to find x first. Is x going to go on top or bottom here? because it's from the same figure as the 15. What goes above it? The other 15, because that's the corresponding side from the other triangle. So we cross multiply and divide. 15 times 15 divided by 9 gives us that x equals 5 times 15 times 5 divided by 9. For y, we're going to start with that same ratio, the 9 to 15. Does y go on top or bottom? It goes on bottom, from the same figure as the 15. What goes above the y? 18. 18. 18 is the corresponding side from the other figure. If we cross multiply and divide, 15 times 18 divided by 9, y equals? Fifteen times eighteen is two hundred and seventy. Two seventy divided by nine is thirty. Why is three inches? Does that all look familiar? How about this? Let's say we want to figure out how high power is. Have the sun producing a shadow here. The shadow of that tower is 180 feet long. Let's say one of you is standing there, let's say you're exactly six feet tall. You cast a shadow. That is nine feet long. How can I figure out how tall that tower is? There's a couple ways I could set this up. Go ahead. Maybe like a triangle thing. Yep, this is a triangle here, and this is a big triangle out here, right? So, Nine here corresponds to what side of the bigger triangle? One eighty. Good. That nine goes to one eighty. Six then goes to the H. H. So six is with the nine. It's on top. It goes to H. Find that height. Cross multiply and divide to get. One hundred and twenty. 
you gotta remember, I've done this stuff every day of my life for like the last 21 years. You get good at it or you go nuts. <laughs> I go nuts. <laughs> now, don't ask my friends. They'll probably tell you I'm already nuts. <laughs> So anyway, that's kind of a review for the stuff that's on the quiz that is posted out there for what we covered last week. That's due when? Due tomorrow. That is quiz yeah. 1-30B. February 7th. He just means it's been revised once. So for today, we're going to talk about the hip roof. Have you guys done much with roof designs and stuff yet? So if the roof, if the end of the house looks like this, this would be called a gable roof. Obviously, there'd be a lookout or overhang coming off it. This would be a gable end. Most of your simpler houses, all the part over there. Most of your simpler houses, that's the way they're built. It's a straight slope with gable ends on either end. You want to get fancy, they make the end of it a hip end, or called a hip roof. So they have this, the main slopes, these are called the common rafters, or common slopes of the roof. The end, instead of coming out to a gable end, it is chopped off in a slope as well to make a hip end. Well, in a hip end, there are two different ways this can be done. A conventional hip, where the main roof slopes and the hip roof slope are the same slopes. So that's what we're going to look at first today, is a conventional hip. All that means is the main roof slope Pulls the hip slope. Main roof slope is also often the slope of the common. Because those rafters that make up the main roof are called common rafters. So the view we are going to take. Basically looking at it from up above like this. So what you're seeing there is basically this view. If you're looking at it from the top, what you're seeing is this main peak here, and then these hip rafters that go down the corners to the corners of the building. Okay, and we're using that to figure out what is it's called the decrease in the hip rafters. So you've got the longest hip rafter here on the hip end. Then we go down to the next one. It's shorter by a certain amount. Well, we get to the next one. It's actually shorter by that same amount. So if you know the difference or the decrease from one to the next, that's the same decrease for all of them. So you just keep subtracting that length as you go down to create your, your hip rafters. So this down here. That's about 17 years old. It's starting to fall apart. If anybody wants extra credit, come talk to me. I need new models built. So we're going to look at, what's that? That's what you're doing. Yeah. I'd give pretty hefty extra credit if. I've only got two of them here. My, my uh, Valley models pretty much fell apart on me several, a few years ago. I need four of them built. I'd be willing to give big points for each of them. If interested, let me know. So in our hip roof, this is our common rafter over here. So our first step find the height of the common rafter. Now we obviously need some more information here. 
I'm going to give you the span of the common rafter here. Let's say that is 36 feet. Then I'm going to give you a slope here. Let's say this slope is, oh, let's go 512. Conventional means the slope over here is also 5. How do we find the height of the common rafter? You know the span is 36 feet. At 12. This is our height. That's what we're looking for right here. 512. Five represents a rise that's vertical. Twelve, it's not written here, but that represents the run that's horizontal. H is vertical. That's the rise. That goes with the five. What goes underneath the H is our run. Eighteen feet, half of our span. So then we find H, we're going to cross, multiply, and divide. 5 times 18 divided by 12, h is 7.5. Now, if that were a finished number, one that we needed for a measurement, we would convert it to feet and inches. It's not. Next one, step two, find the length of the common rack. Length of the common rafter, that's just this length right here. With the information I have, how would I find that? Triangle. This is 7.5, this is, of course, still 18. Right over here is a hypotenuse. Negative theorem, very good. 18 squared plus 7.5 squared. Then we take the square root to find. Nineteen point five feet. Nineteen point five feet is the length of our cone. <clears throat> Step three is to find the length of the longest hip jack. Real easy in a conventional setting. The length of the longest hip jack is this one in the corner here, the one down the middle. It is equal to the length of the common rafter was 19.5 feet, the length of that longest hip jack. Is 19.5. Step four is to find the next longest hip jack. Next longest hip jack would be this one right here. Now, I didn't tell you what our spacing is yet. Let's assume that we're spaced two feet apart. Doing that just to keep our numbers a little bit way simpler. So, what we have here is two triangles. I have this big triangle right here. This is 19.5. Do we know this dimension over here? 18. 18, exactly. It is just half of our span. Then we have this smaller triangle down here. 
this is that next longest jack that we're looking for. Do we know this side? Very good. There's two foot uh, spacings, so it's just two feet shorter than the 18 on the other triangle. So now, it goes to 60. As 19.5 goes to x. Cross, multiply, and divide to get that x is... We're going to go to three decimal places on these. Step five. <coughs> Deck rafter decrease. And that is simply going to be the longest jack rafter, which was 19 feet, minus the next longest one, which was 16.889 feet, gives us a difference of, what is that, 2.111 feet? Oh, it's 19.5, I'm yeah. sorry. I put the wrong number in there, didn't I? Yep. We've got to redo this last couple steps. Oh, I got 19 here. Off the wheel for the day. That should be 19.5. I'm going to pause. Go back to that step. That should be 19 and a half there, not 19. Sorry about that. But we cross multiply and divide it 16 times 19 and a half. That changes things. That'll be 17.33333. So that difference, 19.50 minus 17.333, giving us 0.167 feet. Now, of course, we should change that to feet, inches, and sixteenths. That's two feet. What do I do with the 0.167? Divided by? Divided by times 12. This is going to give us two, basically. Exactly two feet, two inches. So that means each of those jacks is two feet and two inches shorter than the previous jack. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Any hip roof that is 512 slope on both sides, that two foot two inches is jack rafter decrease. Doesn't matter what the span is. Both slopes are 512, it's going to decrease by two feet. Well, since we're having fun, let's do another one. I'm having fun. <laughs> you're assuming your opinion matters here. <laughs> you, you've been in the military, you know how it goes. Yeah. 40 foot span. 612 slope on both the main roof and the hip end. Step one is the height of the common rock. I'll give you about 30 seconds to find that in your notes.
have a slope of 6 over 12. Our vertical is h, that's our height. Our run is 20, half of the span. Cross, multiply, and divide, h is 20. So, step two, find the length of the counter. Half a minute to find that quick. So it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we've got 10 squared plus 20 squared, and then we square root that. Gives us 22. Sense? Question so far. So then, of course, step three. Length of the longest jack. Of course, that's just going to be same as our length of our comet, 22.361. Step four. Next longest. Doing two foot spacing again. Find the length of this next longest jack. Two foot spacing. Give you a minute to set that up and see what you come up with. So in our first triangle here, we got the 22.361, what's the length of the other side? 20, it's half the span. So over on the green triangle, this side is 18. And this is the side we're looking for. 20 goes to 18, 22.361 goes to X. Cross, multiply, and divide, what do you get for x? Three point one two five is correct. So now we gotta subtract. Step five is to find the decrease. A2, three, six, one, minus twenty. One, two, five. Comes out to be two point six. Two 
two feet. Two, three, six times twelve. Two point eight three two. That's two whole inches. Point eight three two times sixteen. Make it sixteenths. So 13 two feet, two and thirteen sixteenths inches is the decrease from one jack to the next. What do you think? Not so bad? A lot of work. It is a lot of work. I know a lot of contractors will just go up there and hold the board up there and mark it rather than measure it out. But if you can do the calculation, it does save a lot of time to be able to cut them all and just take Yes, so how do you figure out your uh, top rafter board? This one here or the one up here? The, for the common, yeah, that one. Your top Pe rafter board. Your Pika ridge beam? Yeah. Um, very good question. It involves actually what I was going to bring up next. This dimension from here to here is called the setback. This is from the end of the roof to where the ridge stops. In this case, that setback would be 20 feet. How did I know that? Half of 40. Half of 40. The slopes are the same. The setback is half of the span. So that means the ridge length here is just the length of the building minus two setbacks or minus the span. Now that only works if it's a conventional where the slopes are the same on the hip end as they are on the common raft. Boy, are you saying if I had two hip ends? Yeah, there's going to be a hip <coughs> end on the other end, yes. Uh, and, and it doesn't matter what those slopes are? It doesn't matter the what the slopes are. As long as the slopes are the same, the hip end is going to take off half of the span on each end. So it's going to take off a full span. Yeah, this is a conventional hip. on each end. Let's say this is 48 feet here and this is 32 feet. This ridge up here is 16. I keep saying they're kind of like true and square. Yep. So those are like different angles or are they kind of just like a 45 degree angle? The angles do change depending on your slope. Your framing square actually has those angles on it. They're kind of, a, we'll, we'll get to some of them, but they're up there. You've got the 45 degree cut in this direction. Well, it's not technically a 45 because if it's coming in flat, it'd be a 45. The fact that it's going down to the slope. It's kind of it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you, this is an 812 slope here. And the span over here, oh, let's see. I tell you, it's a 15 foot setback. What does that tell us about the slope here? It's it has to be the same because the setback is half the span. So this is a conventional hip. In your notes, I'm going to give you about three or four minutes. Find the decrease. Step one, rate of common. I'll put the steps up here. Step two, length of common. Step three, length of the longest jack. Four, the next longest jack. And for step five is the decrease.
I do not. Um, let's see, there's the... Actually, this one I come pretty close to knowing all of them. I feel like that's a hundred thousand dollar. It's another calculator. That calculator, I used to actually, I still have them over here. I'm not going to dig them out. But when you buy those graphing calculators, the TI that's a TI 83, but the TI 84 is a much better calculator. You get a little user manual with it. That's just the most commonly used function. If you want the full user manual, you go to the Texas Instruments website and you can download it. I've got two three inch binders here full of with the full manual for that. It's like 4,000 pages. But way less than what's in that. My first computer, I bought it when I was in eighth grade. I bought it myself. It was an Apple IIc. That calculator has about eight times capacity of what my the whole computer had. That's that's an older version. The newer ones have four or five times, four to eight times as much memory as this, this one. No, it's not. In fact, they're actually sort of backing off on how much memory they put in hard drives or computers anymore. There's so many other options. The external drives and the one drive and all that. But yeah, they want you to still buy those. Yeah. A little boost along here. What'd you get for the height? 10, 10. 10 feet. Good. So 8 over 12 is our slope. That's from here. The run is half the span, 15. So yes, you cross multiply and divide. 10 feet is your height. What'd you get for the length of your common then? Square root of 10 squared plus 15 squared. 18.028 is correct. Let you guys go for the next steps. Yeah, we'll come back to those. You know when you put your feet and you multiply it by 16? Yep. You know, so you get 13.56. Can you round it up to 14 and make it 7 eighths? Yes. It just may be more applicable, otherwise, you're going to be adding on a bunch of rather just a tiny bit short. Um, and that these always end up being slightly rounded anyway because you're only going to be 16. A lot of times, if it comes out to be, you know, when you convert to 16, if it's like 7.4 sixteenths, Every third one or so, you add a sixteenth to it just so you're not losing too much. Of it. Do the same way with stairs. If you're rounding the nearest sixteenth of an inch. Well, if you've got eighteen steps, you're going to be off by nine sixteenths of an inch if you're right in the middle and you round off. So the 18.028 is the length of our longest common, or the length of our common rafter. That is also the length of our longest jack. So to find the next jack, we're assuming we're two foot space. So we have the triangle here for that longest jack. 
we have the 18.028, and this here is 15, just half of the 30 foot span. We have the triangle here for the next longest jack. We're looking for this dimension here. This is 13 feet, just two feet less. So we have 15 relates to 13. <coughs> In the same way as 18.028 x. So we can cross multiply and divide to find x. What do you get for x? 15.624 feet. Good. So that is the next longest jack. So the decrease 18.028 minus 15.624 giving us what? 2.404. That is 2 feet. 404 times 12 gives us what? 4.848. 4 inches. Decimal off of that, the 0.848 times 16, which is 7 eighths, almost 14. Yes, 13.56. 13.56, and that does round up to 14 sixteenths, or 7 eighths. So our decrease is, yes, 2 foot, 4 and 7 eighths inches. And you're right, because it's like 13.5 sixteenths, every second or third one you would adjust by a sixteenth. Round off goes up, build up. Talk about unconventional. In an unconventional hip, the slope of the hip is not the same as the slope of the main roof. This makes life considerably more difficult for us. So I'm here for. We always tell people what part of the title of math teacher implies I'm here to make your life easy. So let's say we got a 36 foot span here. Typically the hip roof is steeper than the main roof. In fact, it's very common to double it. Here we're going to go another common combination. So 612 slope on the main roof and an 812 slope on the hip roof. Step one is still the same. Find the height of the common rafter. And is the 36. Slope is a six. How do I find that height? You cross multiply and divide. H is nine. Second step. We'll find the length of that common raft. Square root of the nine squared plus eighteen squared still. Give us twenty point one two five. That look right? Yeah. Step three is still find the length of the longest jack. Problem is, it's not the same as the longest of the common rafter anymore. Common rafter here is 20.125 feet.
find the length of the count, the, the longest jack here, the first thing we have to do is find the setback. How are we going to find the setback? Well, we know this is our jack, right? The setback, that's this rafter right here that we're looking at. That's this piece. Looking at our model, taking this rafter right here, the longest jack, and we're looking at this side panel. So it's this triangle right here that we're looking at. This one right in here. That makes sense? Can you see that through the 3D shape? What we know about it is that it has an 812 slope. We know the height is the same as the height of the common rafter. It's nine feet. Because they meet at the peak, so they have both have to have the same height. So the setback is the bottom down here. So I've got my 812 is nine over my setback. Cross multiply and divide. 12 times 9 divided by 8. 15.5. Come up here. Now I can find the length of the longest jack. How am I going to find it? Yes, Pythagorean theorem again, exactly. Square root of what? 9 squared and 13.5 squared. Very good. Six point two two five, sixteen point two two five. So up here, this is sixteen point two two five. Now the rest is just the same. The next longest jack. Have here that's 16.225. This is 18, right? Half of our 36 span. Next jack here. This is X, and of course, this is 16. Very good. So we have 18 goes to 16. 16.225 goes to x. Cross multiply and divide. Fourteen point two two two. Fourteen point four two two two. So then our decrease. It's going to be the 16225 minus 14.422. Course is one foot. 803 times 12 is nine inches. I'm just going to subtract the nine inches and then do times 16. 10 sixteenths, so 5 eighths. Now you might have noticed when I said decrease, I labeled it as hip side decrease. Up here in a conventional hip roof, decrease on the main roof side is going to be the same. This decrease here is going to be the same. This decrease here, because the slopes are the same. 
Down here, since the slopes are different, this decrease here is going to be different than what this decrease here might be. In fact, these rafters won't necessarily meet at that hip corner rafter. Spacing is going to put them off because it's not going to be a 45 degree angle on that hip corner anymore. So this is the decrease on the hip side. Now I need to find the decrease on the main roof side. Well, we have this big triangle here. We know that's 20.125 on the side. You know that this side down here is just our setback, the 13.5 feet. Next, Jack is going to be in here. This is still a two foot spacing. Call this Y because we used X on the other one. This is 11.5 feet, two feet less than the 13.5. So we have 11.5 feet compares to 13.5 feet in the same way that Y compares to 20.125. Cross multiply and divide. We get 17.144. Decrease. 2.125 minus 17.144. 2. 1. Times 2 feet. 0.81 times 12. 9 inches. Take off the 9 inches, 0.72 times 16 is 11.5, so that's 12 sixteenths or 3 quarters of an inch. So we have a decrease on either side, on each side. This is when we were given both slopes 6, 12, 8, 12. Not always the case. We might be given this is a five twelve slope over here, and this is a forty eight foot span. Might be given this is a 12 foot setback. So, this is telling us that this is unconventional, that the slopes are not the same. Steps are going to be the same. I don't want the height of the comma. What do I do to find that height? Twelve equals half of the forty-eight. Oh. Gives us the H equals ten feet. Step two, length of common. How do we find that? Square root of 10 squared and 24 squared. Okay. There's 26 feet.
Finding our longest jack is actually easier in this case because we're given the setback. So we know the height is 10 feet. Setback is 12 feet. Longest jack is just the square root of 10 squared plus 12 squared. Fifteen point six two zero. Then we're finding the next jack, X there. Fifteen point six two zero by twenty four X by twenty two. The second to find that jack. We get there. Fourteen point three one eight. Very good. So then our decrease is just the difference. Fifteen point six two zero minus fourteen point three one eight is one point three zero two. I'm just going to leave it as that. I'm going to trust you guys can convert the feet, inches, and sixteen. That's on the jacks or on the hip side, I should say. Go back and do the main roof side. Here we know this is 26. The X, that back is 12 feet. 26, 12, that's what I call that Y somewhere. That was given to us. Oh, yeah. Instead of giving you the slope of the hip, I get. Whereas in the last problem, we had to figure that out using the slopes. N and Y. I'll give you a second to find Y there, quick. Twenty one point six six seven. Yeah. So then we subtract twenty six. Twenty one point six six seven is four point three three three. Yeah. Okay. Which is four feet. Oops, sorry. What do you think? A lot. A lot of steps. Calculator might have to write. Oh, sure. The conventional case where the slopes are the same is on your framing square. Has Chris showed you how to find that? Mm -hmm. We kind of looked at it a little bit last semester, too. So you can find that decrease on the framing square in the conventional case. In the unconventional case where the slopes are different, you have to be able to calculate. I kind of made the worksheet. So, I'm putting in a coding program. Your homework. There is a worksheet posted on Blackboard for you for HIP. You need to be able to recognize if it's conventional, so the decrease is the same on both sides, or if it's unconventional, so you have to have the two different decreases. You guys look fried. Now we had a long day of drawing. 